sometimes referred to as wood and gold, sandalwood, Santalum spicatum, is a native Western Australian plant with strong cultural and historical links to early pioneers and Aboriginal people. For thousands of years, sandalwood trees have been used by Western Australians Indigenous people. Sandalwood bark was used as a cough medicine. The seed kernels form an oil to rub on aching joints. And the nuts roasted and seasoned for a delicious food treat. Australia's Indigenous people were not the only ones to recognise the immense benefits of this product. For centuries, sandalwood has been prized by many Asian cultures for its sweet, woody odour and excellent blending properties. Powdered sandalwood is used to make incense sticks, of which over a billion sticks are burnt each day, while the extracted oils from the heart of the tree are used in perfumes, soaps, cosmetics, therapeutics and medicines. The wood can also be used for decorative carving. Heavy population growth within these Asian countries, coupled with unsustainable harvesting, now sees huge decreases in their own supplies, making sandalwood one of WA's most lucrative natural resources. Western Australia possesses the largest natural sandalwood resource in the world and was first exported to China in 1844 to produce incense. The aromatic quality of the product was deemed to be excellent and the export trade became firmly established, with sandalwood being the state's first significant export commodity. It's been part of our wheat belt culture and own industry, I think, from probably the 1840s through to about 1910, I think $2.25 million worth of income for our fledgling state. You know, so it was a big income earner. I suppose that'd be like $2.25 in today's money. So it was a big deal and probably brought in more than the sheep and the wheat and um, until later on, until the mining sort of got going. It brought people to our district. Dad used to say that when, it, you know, when they first came here in the 1920s, that the main tracks and things that they used to get around on were the tracks that the sandalwooders had put in. Each little region of the West Australian Wheat Belt uh, has, a, has their own local history of sandalwood. In this particular region, um, you know, there's the Sandalwood Road, where wood that was cut out around Tamblup and around the North Stirlings was shipped down to Cape Reach and then put on boats and, and sent to Southeast Asia. Um, uh, towns like Hyden owe their existence to sandalwood, and many other places in uh, in Western Australia owe their existence to to the early sandalwood cutters that, that really developed the the land and identify good agricultural land. The industry continued to develop as sandalwood in the WA wheat belt region was salvaged ahead of land clearing for agricultural purposes. Over the years, many pockets within these cleared areas are now subject to salinity, water logging and wind erosion, combined with reducing winter rainfall, making them quite unproductive for traditional annual crops. In Frank Bremel's book on the history of Mount Marshall, one of the sandalwood have said that the Wadjil country was where they got the best sandalwoods, up to a tonne in one tree. When I read that, my eyes lit up and thought, whoa, that sounds pretty good. Um, so I, I then, you know, in my own plantations, I started to focus almost exclusively on, on the, deep, the deep sands, deep acidic sands, which are not viable really for agriculture. Uh, they're prone to all sorts of erosion and salinity. Unlike many other forms of farming, Sandalwood production requires very little in the way of herbicide and pesticide use. It's a low input, long term crop, well adapted to be established within a variety of soil types and rainfall zones. Sandalwood production is sustainable and has the potential to provide and improve both economic and environmental outcomes across many rural areas of Western Australia. Ideally, a suitable farm should contain at least 10% perennial vegetation and if native vegetation has been cleared, sandalwood provides the best option to meet this target. Sandalwood harvesting within our state currently occurs exclusively from natural stands and although the wild harvest in WA is managed well and provides a sustainably managed supply, there is demand for even greater quantities. The plantation industry really started building from 2000, with the bulk of harvesting due to begin from 2015. Opportunities now exist for farmers who want to diversify their farm income, 
and improve land degradation issues on their properties. I went into Sandalwoods because on this country I can't get any productivity out of cropping. It's wadule sand which means it's highly acidic, very unproductive as far as uh, cropping goes. I tried wheat, lupins, triticale, nothing really yields any, any good. In a good year you'll get an average yield, in a poor year you get nothing. So, I mean, on a country like this, I've got this tree behind me is three years old, the host tree, and this sandalwood here, two years old, and it's already fruiting. I'm getting production that I can't, can't get out of crops. And if you overstock it, it just blows away anyway, so you can't do that. So I'm really hoping that the sandalwoods are going to be a viable crop in the future. I guess in this area, they provide a very good backup to farming. When you get years like this, you know, it's basically a drought. If you can get production from your tree crops and uh, income, then that's going to be critical to survival of, of farmers out here. Sandalwood is a small tree growing up to four metres when ready for harvesting after about 20 years. It has a fine texture and few knots in the wood. It's the heartwood of the tree which contains the valuable oil and which has the unique fragrance. The mature fruit of a sandalwood tree consists of a brown, leather-like skin that encloses a hard, smooth, round nut, much like a macadamia nut. These nuts are rich in oil and can be harvested from trees from four years old to provide yet another income stream for the grower. So we've been trying to develop markets for the husk the kernel which is inside the nut itself and the oil that's contained in the kernel because the kernels of sandalwood nuts are about 50% oil um, but it's not a fragrant oil like that's in the timber of, uh, of mature trees so it's a different sort of oil and the oil can be extracted this is a jar of sandalwood nut oil so it's not fragrant like the wood oil and then uh, groups like Mount Romance have been developing some you know some uh, uh, some products from the nut oil itself so but this is a really new area and a really developing uh, area but there's going to be a large resource of sandalwood nuts available for people to make products out of so it may well become Australia's second largest nut crop uh, as well as a as a timber crop as well so pretty exciting in terms of you know, new products and new opportunities that's for sure. Another unique property of Western Australian sandalwood is that it's a hemi parasite meaning that in order to grow and thrive, a host plant needs to be established first with the sandalwood nut planted adjacent to the host in subsequent years. This sort of approach that you're seeing in this particular patch here and some of the work up in the north, northern wheat belt is, goes along the ideas of the biodiverse type sandalwood cultivation system. So it's not a monoculture of one host species and, and sandalwood. It uses as many locally native species as you possibly can to grow good sandalwood but also uh, achieve some real nature conservation values as well. Um, so in this particular plantation we've got about 45 different plant species uh, and all of those contribute to the growth of the sandalwood over a period of 20 years. Some of them are fast growing short lived plants that give the sandalwood some initial vigour and others are longer lived slower growing plants that really just allow the sandalwood to mature. Various techniques in establishing and managing sandalwood plantations have been trialled and researched over the years throughout the wheat belt by Dr Jeff Woodall, with direct seeding generally regarded as a cost effective and successful method of achieving landscape scale revegetation. Plantations can also be established using traditional methods using tube stock. And the good thing about sowing seed is that you can get a much bigger diversity of plants in the, in the final product. If you've ever tried to plant 20 species um, by planting uh, small tube stock, um, it's a lot more difficult to mix them up and get a nice uh, uh, uniform sort of mix of species than it is from, from seed. So there's a cost and a diversity sort of aspect to uh, to the work on, on direct seeding. For best results, it's important to select host species that are suited to both the soil type and climatic conditions of the specific area. All the agronomic information, including optimal stocking rates, is readily available for landowners, as well as help in the actual planting, 
management and harvesting of the crop when it matures, which ensures farmers can enter into growing sandalwood with confidence. Getting farmers to make the shift to include sandalwood as part of their cropping program and providing a continuous supply into the future will be the challenge. I guess further down the track, hoping for a sandalwood industry to start in this area, there's plenty of land suitable for sandalwood production. So maybe in 10 years time we'll have a sandalwood factory. You've got the nuts, are a saleable item straight away. Well, it's not just productivity increases, it's, uh, it's income coming into the whole community, probably jobs and families in the future as well. So we're hoping further down the track it leads to, a, uh, to another industry that can, this area can support. We had been planting trees for quite some time and I was always on the lookout for, for a, uh, a return. It's great to plant all these trees but you've actually got to survive. And I think we found one in, the, in this sandalwood uh, and the only regret I have is that I hadn't, didn't do it earlier. We've got to not only have income just from sheep and cropping but other things, as many things as we can have in our basket the better it is. But they've established well on the wall onto the host now and you can see there's a great amount of anything to, to live off so they're doing, they're doing pretty good and I'm pretty excited about this. What I find really exciting is that I'm involved in something that's fairly new which is really groundbreaking and has lots and lots and lots of positive effects for our environment, for our culture, for our finances, for the viability of farming, for the revegetation of the wheat belt. It has actually changed my life, you know, like it's, it's really given me something that I really want to pursue and really do my best at and it's all about getting some trees back in the wheat belt that belong here and those sandalwoods belong. Unlike many other new industries which are prone to boom then bust, sandalwood has a history that dates back thousands of years and a bright future looking forward with increasing demand for sandalwood from Australian and overseas markets. With no significant long-term natural pests and its hardy nature making it resilient in variable weather conditions, West Australian sandalwood is proving to be an excellent option for every farming property in the Wheatbelt.